Hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Chad Swan Badgero. I'm the artistic director for Peppermint Creek Theater Company, and I'm so pleased to have with us today our guest, uh, Kenneth Jones, the playwright of our upcoming production of The Alabama Story. Uh, and so, uh, Kenneth, thank you so much for being here with us today and chatting. Really, I think there's only been two or three times in our history as a theater company to be able to actually talk directly with the playwright of a show that we're producing. So thank you so much for being here today. Oh my gosh, thanks for having me. I'm super excited about it because it's the Lansing premiere and I'm a Michigander. Yes. So, uh, I'm just glad to talk to you. And I was glad to meet you last summer and, and talk more about your company. I, I love your mission. Thank you. It's such a gift to be able to have this type of insight into a show that we're producing. Let's actually start there. We were going to talk about something else, but I, when you, you started with you're a Michigander. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit about your history with Michigan? Well, I grew up in the Detroit area. I grew up in Southfield and Birmingham. Um, and as a kid, I was addicted to theater. I went to community theater and I went to professional theater and I went to touring theater and I just got really addicted to it. Um, uh, and I thought maybe one day I would be a playwright and I didn't know exactly how to make money at that. So I became a journalist who wrote about theater. I was a theater critic for uh, 13 years in Michigan. I was a theater critic at the Oakland Press in Pontiac, Michigan. And then I was later the theater critic at the Detroit News. And um, I finally thought it was time for me to actually tell my own stories. So I uh, moved to New York, I sold my car. You know, I did that thing that, you know, everyone is terrified to do. Um, and I went to New York and sort of started uh, writing plays and lyrics and, and working on projects and my career sort of took off from there. I had a day job as a journalist in New York as well. Um, but it was always writing uh, creatively on the side, particularly when I got to New York. I wasn't doing it so much in Michigan because I was really committed to being a, a, an objective critic. So I was very lucky to be uh, a critic and to, to see hundreds and hundreds of plays and absorb all of that. We become better theater goers when we see more plays. Mm -hmm. we, come, we become dramatists and, and storytellers when we see more plays. Uh can, can you talk a little bit about, you said that you just decided that it was time for you to start writing your own stuff. Can you, what, what was that tipping point for you? Well, it was a practical tipping point in that the newspaper was starting to cut back its arts coverage. Okay. And I thought this is a good sign. <clears throat> this is a good sign for me to, um, to, to before I'm 40 years old, to try to, um, you know, uh, speak to that creative impulse that I had since I was a kid, but I was afraid I would never make money at it, um, which is primarily why I didn't, was not a creative person. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. So yeah, that just, that really just points to like a lot of bravery that I think so many artists encounter where like this, the, the sort of crossroads of stability versus like really following what you're passionate about. So that's, uh, kudos to you. Can you talk? So you you wrote this play that we're about to produce at Peppermint Creek, Alabama Story. How do you describe Alabama Story to people who don't know about it? Oh my gosh, it's so complicated. It's based on a true story. It's a mix of fact and fiction. Um, it's a mashup of my favorite kinds of plays. It's a romance. It's a comedy. It's a drama. It's a political thriller. It's a workplace um, scenario. It's a memory play. It's a tearjerker. I mean, th there's a lot of stuff in this. It's a highly theatrical world, as you know. Mm -hmm. I, I, I set it in the deep south of the imagination, um, which is a very um, theatrical and fanciful world where people can talk to the audience or there's narration. They break the fourth wall, mm -hmm. the characters. It's storytelling. I, I've sometimes called it um, children's theater for adults. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's partly because it is inspired by a controversy involving a real children's book yep. from 1958. I actually uh, have it here. Yeah, it's called The Rabbit's Wedding. Yes, you can pick it up, and, it's a real book. Yes, it was about a bunny rabbit, a black bunny rabbit who marries a white bunny rabbit. And in the deep south of 1958, um, it was uh, viewed as um, a political book. Mm -hmm. It was um, banned in libraries. A certain senator wanted to to burn it and um it's that senator who is one of the central figures in in alabama story and he fights with the state librarian uh, a heroic woman named emily wheelock reed who doesn't want to remove that book from the shelves and uh so the play takes place in 1959 the year after it was published and it's about emily reed's um journey toward 
holding on to her beliefs that the free flow of information, which is all about librarian, it's what librarianship is about. Mm -hmm. She wants to uh, maintain the free flow of information and she does it at her, at her own peril. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's, it's interesting that you've said it in like the fifties, uh, but that yet that, that story is still so prevalent and relevant today. What has been for you, what was like the hardest part of writing this play? Well, I, I, I think uh, getting, getting the period right and getting the setting right were really important to me. So you know, I went to, I wrote much of it without ever going to Alabama and I had a draft and I thought I, I need to go to Alabama and walk in Emily Reed's hallways and be in that library and to go to the Department of Archives and History and look through newspapers. And, you know, I was doing the research that a journalist might do, really. Um, so I had a draft. Once I did the research, uh, the, the, the boots on the ground research, I then worked on a, different, uh, a revised draft. I cleaned it up, just kept making it better. Um, so I think, I think going there was, um, I guess, not a challenge, but certainly a really important part of this journey. Um, I wanted to get it right. Um, so the the play references various locations in Alabama, like a small town called Demopolis. And I went to Demopolis, which is this charming mm -hmm. little town. And I went to the senator's grave and I ended up writing about the senator's grave in the play. Um, it was just a, it, it, it was a, I, I love the research part of it. So I had a ball. Awesome. I I, I'm intrigued about as a playwright um, what you choose to include in the script, which is sort of what we as a theater company have to work from, right? And then what you choose to leave out. And I think that also is tied into like what your experience has been like as a living playwright that could actively go and see any of these productions. Um, like where does that, where does that, where do you play out as a playwright as far as like what you're actually going to put in, like stage directions, description? that type of text versus the stuff that you choose to leave out. Yeah, I um I write really fat when I when I write. So this ver this play was maybe 3 hours long when I first wrote it. It's okay. now it's okay. now about it's now about 55 minutes and an hour. So it's it's a 2 hour play now. So I I ended up cutting a lot out. Mm -hmm. Um you know, there's that phrase that you have to kill your darlings occasionally. So I left a lot on the side that I really loved. But it was getting in the way of the momentum of the story. You want the story to move along. And this is ultimately a sort of a uh, a chamber piece. It's six people. It, it wants to be a fable and not a an epic. You know, I didn't, it's not a, it's not Angels in America. It's not a two-part six-hour play. Um and just in terms of the practical stuff of uh of, of writing writing stage directions, I um, I really like in, uh, when artists interpret my, my work, but I do specifically like to guide uh, directors um, mm -hmm. toward what I think the world is. I, for example, in Act 2, at the start of Act 2, Garth Williams, who wrote The Rabbit's Wedding, has a big monologue and a, it's a big, delicious um, introduction of why he wrote the book and, and what the controversy is. And it's meant to be him essentially in a a spotlight and I, I've seen some productions where the entire cast is on stage with him and it just it kind of it robs him of the spotlight mm -hmm. um and I specifically say at the top of that stage direction Garth appears alone on stage I mean again artists can interpret it differently yeah. I think it's um you know I, I write stage directions for a reason and, and I don't trust directors who routinely at the beginning of rehearsals scratch out stage directions and say well we'll determine what we do i i think that's mm -hmm. um disrespectful yeah i i imagine that's got to be so tricky because as i said you know at, at the start we've had so few times in our career as a theater even though we're producing a lot of brand new well a new written newly written plays where we actually have that sort of interaction you've been so gracious with your time and with your sort of like willingness to answer questions during this process, talk with our director, Heath, et cetera, um, and, and offer dramaturgy. Um, that's sort of like a gift that we don't often get. But I also wonder, you know, I, that you've reflected on it about how that must be difficult as a playwright. Like I've written this, 
And that's what we'd like to see. And so that's that's sort of really intriguing from an artistic standpoint. What are you, um, uh, Ken, inspired about now? Whether that be like as a playwright, like that's something new you're right, working on, or what do you do to keep yourself inspired as an artist? Um, yeah, what do you, what's, what's the sort of spark of inspiration for you these days? Well, I still go to newspapers to read, to get ideas from newspapers. This play, Alabama Story, I, stum I stumbled on the idea. <coughs> Excuse me. I stumbled on the idea of Alabama Story because I read Emily Reed's obituary. Hmm, okay. I was reading the New York Times, reading the obituary page, and everything about this play is in that obituary. There's a villain, and there's a hero, and there's black and white, and north and south and conservative and liberal and male and female. And I thought, wow, this is halfway written for me. So I, what inspires me is, is digesting stories. And, um, you know, the more I read, the more I get ideas. I often get ideas, you know, you go to a dinner party and you hear someone tell a story and it's like, oh, I think that's a play. It's a, it's a, it's an occupational hazard that, that, <laughs> I, that I see every, you know, I see a play in everything. Yeah. Do you, uh, before we let you go, I want to, um, I'm intrigued about the thing you said at the beginning, which was, and I wanted, I, I was seeing so many plays, et cetera, and I, and I always wanted to be a playwright. Um, you know, I, I see things now as an occupational hazard to like go to plays and not just sit there and pick apart the directing and like how, how I would direct this or how, the pictures in my head, or especially when we, when we read new plays just in text form. Um, what's your advice for, I, I'm interested in like what you might say to someone who might have an inkling of like being a playwright, what does that look like? Or what would you tell them? I would say, um, for, for people who want to write plays, start small plays are really just about two people talking. Mm -hmm. That's all plays are. I, I, you know, don't think about rising action and climax and denouement. It's all that, that, that that's great to study all of that. I think writing a scene with two people talking to each other and making sure there's conflict in it and making sure somebody has a goal in that scene or an, or an um, obstacle or, you know, theater is about conflict. So I just wrote a play um, that's a series of, of scenes of first dates. It's about a, it's about a dating app and, it, and the dating app places people on a park bench. And the entire play is just a park bench. That's the set. And it's 10 minute scenes. It's called 10 minutes on a bench because the app says you only have 10 minutes to have this speed date. Well, it's a, it's a, it really began as an exercise for me to write two person scenes about conflict. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a great jumping off point for, for any writer to, I, is it a mother and daughter talking? Is it a father and son talking? Is it two lovers talking? You know, those are, you know, is it a, is it a librarian and a politician talking? Mm -hmm. I think just two person scenes are, are great. And, and you don't have to write 150 pages. You write 10 pages and those 10 pages may be written over a month. Start small is, is what I would say to, to playwrights and also uh, to read everything and see as many plays as you can see. Yeah. Ken, you've planted so many really great seeds for us today. Uh, like being a playwright, like seeing lots of theater, reading a lot of theater. Um, also, and just like also new work that you're working on. If anyone wanted to like find out more about you, they're going to come see our production and fall in love with you. Uh, do you have like a website or what What do you normally say if people are like, I love your work? What do you tell them? Yeah, I, I do have a website. It's it's uh, by Kenneth Jones, B-Y, KennethJones.com. And you can learn more about me at my website and um, shoot me an email from the website, but my, I write about other playwrights as well. I interview playwrights about their work. So my website is really to promote my work, but also I, I, I did not get rid of the journalist in me. Mm -hmm. You know, I really like to talk about playwrights and to interview playwrights, particularly playwrights who, who need the ink, mm -hmm. you know, the Lion King doesn't need me covering them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, so I love just doing Q and A's uh, with playwrights that you may never have heard of, but whose plays you might want to read or might want to produce one day. Yeah. Can I thank you so much for your time today? You, you know, we had just, we typically do, you know, seasons that are four or five plays and you have given us such a gift in Alabama story for, for us as a theater company and also as a community here in Lansing uh, in this play. And I think the way that it serves our mission to address current issues 
um, and create dialogue. And so I'm I'm so excited for Lansing audiences to come and experience this play and and the world that you've created. Uh, so thank you for your play and thank you for your graciousness and and sort of walking alongside us as a theater company in presenting it to the Lansing community. It's also really exciting that you're a Michigan native and for this to be the Lansing premiere. So thank you so much for this play you've written. Well, thank you so much for doing it. And you know, the play is not a lecture. It's really, it's really, it's a ride. Um, so I think people are really going to love it there. And it's got a lot of Michigan references in it. So I think uh, I've embedded a lot of Michigan stuff in it. If you like Verner's, there's a lot of Verner's. Ah, there. Yes, there is. So uh, I'm so thrilled you're doing it. Thank you, Chad. It means a lot. Yes, thank you. So uh, tickets are available now for Alabama Story opening April 18th. Uh, thank you, Kenneth, for joining us. And uh, we look forward to seeing you at stage one uh, in April to see this awesome play. Thank you so much. Thanks, Chad.